Hi, I'm Ros Atkins. Welcome to BBC World News Live from our new home at Broadcasting House. Let's begin this hour in Bamako. Rebels in Mali seize a government-held town as France insists its military intervention will only last weeks. Amid stark warnings of the humanitarian crisis facing Syrians, the BBC's Lise Doucette reports from a refugee camp in Lebanon. The children, the children are, are everywhere and you see them there, their hands are, are freezing and their teeth are just are chattering, they're so cold. It's believed to be the biggest gathering on earth. We're going to show you the extraordinary site of the Kumela Festival in India. And our new home, BBC Broadcasting House, is the biggest multilingual newsroom in the world. We're going to show you around. The French government says its military intervention in Mali is developing favourably. That isn't how everyone would describe it. Today, Islamist rebels seized a town inside government-controlled territory and just 400 kilometres from the capital, Bamako. And it's from there that our world affairs correspondent, Mark Doyle, sends this report. The French troops have come from various permanent bases. Mark Doyle, BBC News, Bamako. Well, there's Mark Doyle in West Africa. Now let's uh, turn to Paris and the BBC's Christian Fraser. And Christian, as I was mentioning in my introduction, the French government's been reasonably bullish about this military operation, but the fall of this town today must be seen as a serious blow. You're absolutely right, Ros. It, it underlines, uh, again, of the sort of terrain, the difficult terrain they're fighting in. This is an area the size of Spain. Uh, so they may be able to dislodge Islamists from towns and cities around northern Mali, but obviously uh, they... All right, Christian, thank you very much for bringing us up to date. Now, humanitarian appeals often go through two stages. First, aid agencies warn that lives are being lost and they ask for help. Then second, weeks or months later, there's fierce criticism of the world's response. And that's what's happening with Syria. Today, the International Rescue Committee says the global response has been drastically insufficient. And the Syrians who are suffering have sought refuge across the region. The BBC's chief international correspondent, Lise Doucette, sends this report from Lebanon. It's been the worst of winters. Now, I'm hoping you've noticed that we've moved into our new home. It's called Broadcasting House, and this studio, which is right down in the basement, is just one part of it. And what well, being here is exciting for a number of reasons, the main one being that for the first time, all of the BBC's global journalists are together in one newsroom. You can see it just behind me, and that is going to be quite some resource. Here's Lucy Hawkins to show you around. Welcome to Broadcasting House, home of BBC News here in central London. For the first time in the BBC's history, our network and global services in radio, television, online and news have been brought together. Once we've all moved in, there will be 6,000 people working here. That's approximately 45% of all BBC News staff. So what is it that makes this building so special? Well, at its heart is the biggest newsroom in Europe, bringing together journalists from television, radio and online, broadcasting in 28 different languages. The vision behind the layout here is that all of these teams are connected so that when a story comes in, we're easily able to share video and audio and, most importantly, the breaking news as it unfolds. BBC have invested in all the latest technology and it's here in our galleries and studios where you can see it in action. And here we are in Studio A, our virtual reality studio where we have the ability to conjure up all sorts of computer generated environments like this abandoned warehouse. You might recognize this one. That's right, it's Jupiter's moon Ganymede. I've even got the ability to take you all the way to Washington and the White House. how it looks on air but at the core of everything we do is our journalism and to get a sense of how this building brings together the best of the BBC you have to go a few floors up and Lucy's taking her own advice because she joins us live now from the fifth floor of the world's 
newsroom. And the fifth floor is particularly important, isn't it, Lucy? Because that's where a lot of our language services are based. Absolutely, Ros. I'm sure you recognise this environment. I'm actually in a radio studio here on the fifth floor. BBC Swahili have just come off air, but you're dead right. The fifth floor is the home to our 27 language services who broadcast on radio, television and also online. And I'm bringing you out into the newsroom because this is the Africa Hub. Not sure if you knew this, but there are a hundred journalists working in the Africa Hub. Really busy today, of course, because of the situation in Mali. If you just look in the distance there, you can see a group of editors who have just finished a conference call with their colleagues in Nairobi. So they're staying on top of things there, using that area there for a conference call. But Roz, you know this as well as I do. What is remarkable is for us to be able to come up here to the fifth floor, talk to our colleagues in the French uh, for Africa service, for instance, and find out what is really going on on the, on the ground in Mali. They've been talking to their colleagues there and their contacts. They've got someone on the way from their team heading to Mali now. Uh, news but they're feeding all that information to us and it's a remarkable thing for us now to be here in this building and to have all of this expertise at our fingertips. Lucy thank you very much it certainly is very exciting to be able to involve our language services so much more in our coverage. All right well let's switch from Lucy on the fifth floor of Broadcasting House to Los Angeles because there were quite a few surprises at the Golden Globe certainly the biggest was Ben Affleck's double for his Iranian hostage film, Argo. I don't know if you've seen that. Perhaps more predictably, some of the acceptance pieces definitely warranted a second look. Here's our entertainment correspondent, Lizo Mzimba, with the story of the night. Lizo Mzimba, BBC News. You see, I'm watching that and thinking, just how long did it take them to get to the ceremony? Because in a few minutes' time, we're going to start our gridlocked world season. And we'll be finding out whether Los Angeles or Moscow has the worst traffic congestion. Now, in other news this hour, a court in Italy says the Moroccan nightclub dancer known as Ruby Heartstealer doesn't need to give evidence against Silvio Berlusconi. The former Italian Prime Minister is accused of... Hi, this is Ros Atkins with you live on BBC World News from our new home broadcasting house. Islamist militants in Mali have captured another town in a counter-attack despite continued air bombardment by France. And Syria faces a staggering humanitarian disaster as 600,000 refugees face the harshest winter for years in the region. Well, we've known for a few weeks that the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge are expecting their first child. And now we know uh, roughly when he or she is going to a drive. Our royal correspondent, Peter Hunt, is at Canada Gate in central London. Hi, Peter. So what's the date? Farmer has been warning of a new economic crisis unless the Republicans in Congress agree to raise the U.S. sovereign debt ceiling. This may all sound a little familiar. There was a similar standoff a few months ago. Now, at a press conference at the White House, the president said America and the world can't afford another debate in Congress about whether the country should pay its bills. So to even entertain... ...that we'll hear of that, I suspect. Now, I'm guessing a good many of you have daily experience of bad traffic jams, and I'm afraid all the evidence suggests that congestion around the world is going to get worse. So we've put together a series of reports here on the BBC called Gridlocked World. And to start us off, we've set Alistair Leithhead in Los Angeles and Steve Rosenberg in Moscow a challenge. Just how far can they get on one hour on the road. So after day one of Gridlock World, let's have a quick look at how each of our correspondents traveled uh, during their hour on the road. Uh, Steve Rosenberg in Moscow managed just 4.5 kilometers, while Alistair Leithhead in LA, which in itself is a complete nightmare to drive in, notched up 24.8 kilometers, so almost six times uh, better than Moscow. They're both uh, pretty bad, if you ask me. Now, tomorrow, we'll see how our correspondents in Paris and Lagos fare with their challenge. Boy, oh boy, Lagos. It took me five hours to get to the airport once. Now, no sign of this terrible smog in China clearing up. You might have seen the pictures. Let's show you some of the latest we've got from a number of the cities in the north of the country which are affected. These are from Beijing. The main... Well, a good day at the office for Rory McElroy. As expected, he signed an eye-watering deal with Nike. We don't know the exact details, but we think it's going to be around 100 or $125 million over five years. He's uh, understandably quite pleased about it. I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited to be in. 
Congratulations to him. Now, I wanted to show you some of the wonderful images that we've got coming in from the Kumela Festival in India. I don't know if you've heard about this. It only takes place every 12 years. And from uh, one set of striking pictures to another, we're going to leave you with images from our top stories. Islamists in Mali have seized a key town despite sustained bombardment by French warplanes. The French government saying they are happy with how their operations are going. In Syria, there are further warnings that there's going to be a humanitarian crisis as 600,000 refugees uh, are now facing the harshest winter for many, many years. And really, the Golden Globes used to be just a warm-up act for the Oscars, but now everyone takes them quite seriously. It was uh, on on Sunday night, and the big winner was Les Miserables, but perhaps the critics saw that coming. The surprise package was Ben Affleck. He had a double win for his film, Argo. Thanks for your company. I'll speak to you in a little while.